Hello everyone, welcome back to Sermon on ICT Prep. Today we're tackling chapter 14, Functions of the College Panda Math Book. Let's get started with question 1. The table above displays several points on the graph of the function f in the xy plane. Which of the following could be fx? So we can check each answer choice to see whether, uh, let's say f is 0 is equal to 20, f1 is equal to 21, f3 is equal to uh, 29. And the only one that should be able to satisfy all three would be d. So what we can do is just plug in for 3, 1, 0 for all the functions. And the one that yields the same y result is the correct answer, which in this case should be d. In the portion of the xy plane that's shown above, how, for how many values of x does fx is equal to gx? So this only happens when they intersect, right? And we see that they intersect at three points here. So there must be three values of x where fx is equal to gx, so the answer is d. The graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above. If fa is equal to f3, which of the following could be the value of a? So we know that f3 here, when f when x is equal to 3, we get the value of negative 2 for y. So where else is f where else is f at negative 2, right? We can see that f is at negative 2 for negative 3, so the answer should be b. The function f is graphed in the xy plane above. For how many values of x does fx is equal to 3? And what we can do here is to just basically draw a horizontal line for y is equal to 3. And by doing so, we get 1, 2, 3, 4 overlaps. So the answer is there is 4 solutions. For which of the following functions is it true that f negative 3 is equal to f3? So what we can do here again is to just plug in negative 3 and 3 for x and work out which of the ones would result in the same value, okay? So here, c looks a bit promising, so let's do it for c, for negative 3 first. And we know that when you square a negative number, you get a positive number, so you get 28. And if you use uh, 3 as well here, you still get a positive squared number, so we also get 28, so the answer is C. The trick for these types of questions is to realize that if some number is squared and it's negative, then it turns back into positive. So we can just immediately look for this and we can just know that C is the correct answer because it will always give a positive value if x is squared. Moving on to question 6, the function f is defined by fx is equal to 3x plus 2, and the function g is defined by f2x minus 1, what is the value of g10? So here, g10 will be equal to f20 minus 1, right? So f20 is equal to 3 times 20 plus 2, which is 62. And we know that g10 is f20 minus 1 so we do 61 62 minus 1 which is, uh, which is equal to 61 so the answer is 61 if fx is equal to 16 plus x squared over 2x for all x is, x cannot be equal to 0 what is the value of f negative 4 so what we can do here is just basically substitute negative 4 and 4x and if you do this you get 32 here and negative 8 here and 32 minus negative 8 is divided by negative 8 is negative 4. So the answer is B. Several values of the function f are given in the table above. If fx is equal to ax squared plus b, where a and b are constants, what is the value of f3? So we can just plug in the values and solve for a and b. So we can plug in 0, negative 2. Then we've got negative 2 is equal to a times 0 squared plus b, which is equal to b. So b must be equal to negative 2. We can plug in 1, 3, which will lead us to get 3 is equal to a squared. a times 1 squared is a minus 2. So b, so a is equal to 5, right? So we know that a is 5, and fx is 5x squared minus 2. So f3 is 5, 3 cubed, 3 squared minus 2 is 43. So the answer is c. Question 9, if fx is equal to x squared for each, which of the following values of c is f c is less than c? So all we can do here is, is just plug in the answer choices and check. Let's do 1 over 2 first. So if f is 1 over 2 is equal to 1 over 2 squared, 
Uh, this is correct because 1 over 2 squared will be 1 over 4, which is less than 1 over 2, so the answer is A. If the graph of the function f has x-intercepts at negative 3 and 2, and a y-intercept at 12, which of the following could define f? So, the x-intercepts of negative 3 and 2 means that the fx must have factors of x plus 3 and x minus 2, so that eliminates uh, c and d. And the y-intercept of 12 means that if you plug in for x is equal to 0, fx should naturally give us 12. And the only one that gives us 12 should be b, so the answer is b. The functions f and g are defined above. What is the value of f, g, 2? So here, what we can do here is to find g2 first, and then solve off, and then after we solve this, we can find fg2. So fg2 is equal to 2 squared minus 3, which is 3. And now we use this x value for fx. So we get 3 squared plus 1, so we get 10. So the answer is c. The graph of the function f and, linear, and line segment ab are shown in the xy plane above. For how many values of x between negative 3 and 3 does fx is equal to c? So g2 is equal to 2... Uh, okay. So what we can do here is to draw a horizontal line at y is equal to c, right? And by doing so, we can see that it intersects 1, 2, 3 times. So the answer is 3. The table above gives some values of the function f. If gx is equal to 2fx, what is the value of k if gk is equal to 8? So here we know that gk is equal to 8, which is the same as 2fk is equal to 8. So fk is 4. So fk is only 4 when x is equal to 3. So the answer is k is equal to 3. The function f is defined above for all x is greater than or equal to 2, which of the following is equal to f18 minus f11. So f18 is root 18 minus 2, which is 4, and f11 is 11, root 11 minus 2, which is 3, right? So it's 4 minus 3, which is 1, and, by, and all we need to do is test each of the answer choices. And if we do so, f3 seems to give us uh, 1, so the answer is a. Which of the following points in the xy plane is not on the graph of y? So we know that here one, one, two cannot be on the y on the graph because an x value of one here uh, would e would lead to zero, right? So it cannot exist. Let the function g be defined by g x is equal to root three x. If g a is equal to six, what is the value of a? So g a is 6. So root 3 a is equal to 6. So 3 a should be equal to 36 because we're squaring both sides. So a must be naturally 12. Question 17 and 18 refers to the following information. The functions f and g are defined for the six values of x shown in the table above. What is the value of f g negative 1? So we know that g of negative 1 uh, will give us 2, right? So f2, when f is equal to 2, should give us 6. So it's 6. If gc is equal to 5, what is the value of fc? Okay, so gc is 5, which means if gc is 5, then it means f x is 1, right? So f1 should equal to 3. So the answer is 3. If fx is equal to negative 3x plus 5 and 1 over 2 fa is equal to 10, what is the value of a? So from the second equation, uh, fa will be equal to 20 since we're moving 1 over 2 to the other side. So we have 20 is equal to negative 3a plus 5. So 3a is equal to negative 15 and a is equal to negative 5. So the answer is b. Question 20, several values of the function f are given in the table above. If the function g is defined by gx is equal to f2x minus 1, what is the value of g3? So we know that g3 is equal to f23 minus 1. So that is uh, f5 is equal to 2, right? Because if we have f5 here, we, get, we should get... Uh, two from the table. So the answer should be A.
the functions f and g are defined above, which of the following is equal to f8? So f8 is 4 times 8 minus 3, that's 29. And what we can do is we can just test each answer choice to see which one yields uh, 29. And we can see here that if we do g8, uh, which is 3 times 8 plus 5, that will give us 29. So the answer is g8. The graph of the function y is equal to 9 minus x squared is shown in the xy plane above. What is the length of AB? So when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 9, the y-intercept is 9, right? And so when, and we, call, we can also see that when y is equal to 0 and x is equal to 3, the y-intercept, the x-intercept is 3. So, you know, we can kind of treat this as like a triangle with the base of 3 and the height of 9. So we can use Pythagoras theorem, which is 9 squared plus 3 squared is equal to AB squared. So we get 90 is equal to AB squared, which is AB will be 3 root 10, so the answer should be B. Question 23, the function f is graphed in the xy plane above. If the function g is defined by gx is equal to fx plus 4, what is the x-intercept of gx? So the graph of g is 4 units up from where f is, right? But because the slope is f is equal to 2, negative 2, the x and y-intercepts of g will not increase by the same amount. They'll increase by a ratio of 2 to 1, right? So when the y-intercept gets shifted up by 4, then the x-intercept should be shifted up by 2 to the right. So the so the new x-intercept should be 1 plus 2, which is 3. So the answer is C. Question 24. The function fx is equal to x cubed plus 1 is graphed in the xy plane above. If the function g is defined by gx is equal to x plus k, where k is a constant and fx is equal to gx has three solutions, which of the following could be the value of k? So here what we can do is basically we know that the f function of gx is a line with a slope of 1 and an intercept of k, right? So if you can draw gx with different possibilities for k from the different answers choices, you can kind of see that uh, there's an intersection of three points when f with fx only when k is equal to 1. Because if we do it like here, we see that there's only one intersection, right? But if we make sure that the y when k is equal to 1, so like this, We can see that there are three solutions. So the answer should be C. In the xy plane, the function y is equal to ax plus 12, where a is a constant, passes through the point negative a, a. If a is greater than 0, what is the value of a? So we know that a is equal to a times negative a plus 12. So a is equal to negative a squared plus 12. And a squared plus a minus 12 is equal to 0. So a plus 4 a minus 3 is equal to 0 so a must be negative 4 and 3 but since we know that a must be greater than 0 the only possible answer is 3 yep that is it for today thank you very much for watching and i hope you stay tuned for the next chapter